Hi, I'm Maa Salah from Middle East Monitor, and today I'll be showing you how to make harra usbal. Levantine cuisine is known for being delicious and for its literal names, which usually tell you what's in the dish or how it's made. However, another thing it's known for, especially Syrian cuisine, is its funny names. This dish, harra usbal, is one of them, and they usually have a story behind them. There are a couple of different stories behind the naming of this dish, but they all involve an impatient individual who had to taste the dish while it was being cooked. So they put their finger in the pot and burned it. Hence the name Harra Usbao, meaning the dish that burned his finger. This dish is a great dish for the winter months, as it'll keep you warm and full for a long time. It originates in Syria and the people of Damascus are most famous for it. This is made across the Levant and even the Arab world, as well as other similar dishes like Palestinian dishtiyat adas, but I personally prefer the Syrian version. This is mainly because while lentils and dough are delicious on their own, what really makes this dish sing are the garnishes. Each garnish plays a part in making harra usbao absolutely amazing, with the pomegranate giving fruitiness and sweetness, the coriander freshness, the onions earthiness, and the bread crunchiness. Nowadays, many people use pasta like pappardelle or fettuccine instead of making the dough. But I prefer making my own dough because I prefer the silky texture that it has. But feel free to use pasta. Just make sure to break it into shorter pieces before adding it to the lentils. I usually make this dish after making something with dough like fatayir and save a bit of the dough for this dish. But making the dough is so fast and it doesn't need to rise. Although there are many steps, this dish is straightforward and things like fried bread and fried onions can be made ahead of time. It's important not to add too much water to the lentils because we'll be cooking the dough in the same water and we don't want it to be too watery. We could always add water if we feel like the lentils are drying out or that the mixture is too thick. I like my lentils to be on the tangy side, but feel free to taste and adjust the mixture to your own taste. This is best eaten room temperature, but it can be in hot or cold. Whichever way you eat it, I'm sure you're going to love it.